hey, it's Sleepy American, and I basically just wanted to tell a story. Back in 2002, when my great uncle Vernon died, I uh, was with my mother and my father, my grandma and grandpa Nesmith, and my sister Katie and her husband Noel. We're a hilarious bunch, so it's very funny when we all get together. Uh, they make me laugh a lot. I, I love to laugh. Uh, basically, I uh, don't let the laughter... Um, I don't let cataplexy pro stop me from laughing or having a sense of humor. To me, it would be like giving up part of my soul... It was quite severe, especially back then. No treatment, not enough treatment at all. And um, I hadn't had much sleep, and I had been sad about my uncle passing. But um, we kind of helped but laugh uh, together. And I went and I collapsed um, when we were joking about my uh, brother-in-law uh, um <laughs> being a Twinkie, <laughs> but um, basically it threw me into cataplexy, it's like, oh, I, 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 like, oh, and my face collapsed, and then my whole body, like a puppet, cutting the strings off, like, Well, I went into severe sleep paralysis, much like the sleep paralysis video um, of mine, um, for about 30 minutes. When your family doesn't really understand cataplexy, they freak out. They freak out, especially for the first several times, about the first year or two. Especially when you're like out for like not just a little bit, but you're into, they think you passed out, which is false. Basically, you go paralyzed, but you're completely alert of your surroundings. You may be not be able to open your eyes, but I could hear absolutely everything going on. And my, unfortunately, my family's reactions, which are very dramatic. Oh my God! Oh my God! Is she? Is she passed out? Oh my gosh! Did she die? It's like, oh no! Don't make her laugh, David. Don't make her laugh. Don't make her laugh. <laughs> Uh, but it, 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 that my mother's and grandmother's reaction just threw me into it deeper because I found their reactions hilarious because I could hear everything going on. My family didn't really rem believe me that that uh, I could hear everything going on, but I could. I could hear every little thing uh, about oh is she passed out? Is she gonna be okay? Don't make her laugh. Oh, is she dead? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> and I get a mood to say anything, but I, but I had to wait until it passed and they stopped overreacting. And, um, my dad never believed me. Well, he was very skeptical. I'll put it that way, that I wasn't completely passed out asleep. Cataplexy is different than going into a sleep attack. It's when your brain thinks, oh no, this person is having an extreme emotion. They need to be asleep. They need to be paralyzed. So you don't go to sleep. You're just aware and paralyzed completely, partially to completely. And it was more completely for me at that point. Um... My dad didn't believe me, so he he came up with this idea. He's like, Rachel, the secret word is pomegranate. Uh, if you can really hear me, the secret word is pomegranate. Well, I eventually did come out of cataplexy. And I was like, Dad, the secret word is forbidden <laughs> and I went into cataplexy again for about 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> but we deal with a lot of that uh, at first. Where, where, I mean, little things like that infuriate me that 
they don't believe, people don't believe us that cataplexy is different from a sleep attack. And it's just, um, that story's a classic, and <laughs> my dad and I and my family laugh about it all, all the time. But I've had narcolepsy a long time now, and it's definitely, um, definitely part of who I am. Um, it doesn't define me, but it, I've learned to, le learn to live within the confines of my, my disability. Um, I have a right to life just as much as anybody else. Um, I have worth just like anybody else. I have an increased sense of empathy towards others that go through medical problems. A lot of times family doesn't believe people with invisible disabilities. They don't, it's hard for them to believe because they can't see the suffering. They can't see the pain. And they can't see the cataplexy, which they think is a seizure type or passing out asleep, which it's not. But try to keep your sense of humor if you have narcolepsy and cataplexy because a lot of times people will, you have to block off your emotions sometimes and even your, for me, sleepiness can put me into it. I've been apologizing for my symptoms of narcolepsy since 2002, 2001. And um, it, I, it's never apologized to me, but I'm apologizing. Oh, I'm sorry. I had sleep paralysis. I'm sorry that 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 I disturbed you, or that I um, went into cataplexy and fell down. You know, sorry that I overslept. I didn't expect to go into a sleep attack. But it's it's a very interesting uh, life, a very original life, and. It's enriched my soul, and if I can reach out to one person with narcolepsy to let them know that they're not alone, that that cataplexy is can be detrimental. I've broken a foot before. I've um, I've hurt my knees a lot, and I've been very scared. And I had to give up driving as a result of getting cataplexy at stoplights whenever I would try to fight off sleepiness. I miss driving. I don't have any empathy for anybody who gets a DUI. Um, I didn't do anything wrong and um, I just didn't want to kill people driving. But um, God bless and may may pomegranate live within all of us so we can always laugh about the hardships we go through, but don't let the hardships take your spirit. Thanks. Good night.